as we have been in this series of open heaven the Lord has been speaking to me and giving me more revelation concerning open heaven and that open heaven is not just a particular season in the kingdom he helped me to understand that open heaven has been ever since he died on the cross there has been an open heaven because the veil was rent from the top to the bottom giving us access to the throne of grace we don't need a priest he has become our high priest and so we all can go boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy to find grace to help in the time of need I'm going to read and then I'm going to have a video to play and then we'll start I want you to go with me please to Matthew 6 22 Matthew 6 22 I'm going to read first we have the video and then I'm gonna come after and preach this glorious gospel the gospel of Matthew 6 22 I pray that this is a motivating sermon today, encouraging sermon. I'm here to be the Sergeant Carter and to light the fire, to get you out of your place of complacency. Today is that day where it will be a shift for you. So many times we say shift and we thinking about an atmospheric shift but there needs to be a shift in your mind. Amen. Let me read for you. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness let me go back for the light of the body is the eye if therefore thine eye be single thy whole body shall be full of light but if thine eye be evil thy whole body shall be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness how great is that darkness may the Lord add a blessing to the reading hearing of his precious word I'm going to talk about today how bad do you want it look at your neighbor and say neighbor how bad do you want it you may be seated as we prepare for the video to sharpen your skills? How bad do you want your children to stay on the right course? We don't think twice about having to get our children up for school. Their schooling is incredibly important, but I could argue that their spiritual life is even more important. Learning to honor God as a person of excellence and integrity, those seeds planted in them will affect them for the rest of their lives. How bad do you want your marriage, your relationships to work out? Bad enough to clean up a mess that you didn't make? There are new levels in front of us, but much of it depends on how bad we want it. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for such a time as this. We stand before you as empty pitchers before a full fountain saying feed us to overflowing we pray for preaching mercy and grace and that the words that we speak no devil in hell will steal the word from getting to the hearts of your people we thank you for this word today that is going to cause transformation edification 
and inspiration. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? The scripture says the eye is the light of the body. If your eye is good, your whole eye or your whole body will be full of light. But if the eyes are not good, that means your body will be full of darkness. Eyes that are good, they see and they perceive. Let me say it again. Eyes that are good, they see and perceive. Perception. That's an interesting word. With your natural eyes, you're able to see all around you. But with your spiritual eye, it's called perception, which takes us into discerning, discerning what's going on all around you. It is important that we have discerning eyes so we can see and recognize those things in the spirit spirit realm that is essential. For if you do not perceive right, you will not receive right. And if you do not receive right, you will not speak right. Let me say it again. If you do not perceive right, you will not receive right. And if you do not receive right, you will not speak right. Many times you have heard me say, according to the power also Paul, he says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. The eye of your understanding are perceiving right. The eye of your understanding are enlightened so you would know what is the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of his inheritance, the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe so perception has all to do with your belief system when you perceive right your whole body will be full of light because you are able to comprehend what is before you uh, one of the things that Jesus did uh, in his time of walking the earth is to heal the eye heal that was that was huge as with blind Bartimaeus, he cried out when he heard the son of David was passing by and he was desperate for healing. He was hungry for healing. He wanted it real bad. And although the people was trying to calm him down and say, do not open your mouth, he cried out the more because he wanted something from God. I have something to ask you. How bad do you want what you want from God? And are you desperate enough to be as blind Bartimaeus and cry out? out from the abyss of your soul and say God I need you like the flower needs the rain I seek your face as the deer that pants after the water brook so my soul pants after thee bread of heaven feed me till I want no more I'm thirsty for you I'm longing for you how bad do you want it as an individual, I must tell you that I am hungry for life. I have a ravenous hunger and a thirst for life. I, I want to see. I want to experience. I want to see new things. I want to become. I want to create. I want to teach. I want to preach. I want to sing. I want to play. I want to have a good time. I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to experience the best of life. I mean, after all, isn't that what Jesus said I come to give you life and that more abundantly that means there's 
more to life than Peoria. There's a whole world out there I want to see, I want to experience, I want to do, I want to create. I have a ravenous hunger for life. And I don't want to waste time on menial conversations that has taken me nowhere and producing nothing. I, I don't want to waste time on menial tasks that are going nowhere. Menial associations that's more discouraging opposed to encouraging. I have a ravenous hunger and thirst for life. But I realize in order for me to have those things that I so desire, it will require discipline. Oh, Lord, I'm going somewhere. Put your seat belts on because I'm getting ready to rock your world. Many have a desire to have even a, a certain body type. <laughs> A certain physique, if you will. Uh, and, and they envision what they want their body to look like. And it's Shazam. They think it's going to happen like that. But I would like to submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that it don't work like that. It's going to cause you some work. Here lately, I've been working on the abs, you know, because ever since I got married, because when I married my wife, I want to tell you, abs and chest was going on, but then my got married. Mary and 20 extra pounds hit my body all that potato salad and chicken and macaroni and cheese and Puerto Rican rice and I'm telling you all that stuff hit my body and it pushed me to a place I needed more workout because I was losing my abs and my chest because you know I'm a big ball of shot caller a styler and a profiler do I got anybody with me that day why y'all looking at me so funny but I discovered I, I stay in the gym to keep toned up but I remember the days that I was working out two hours a day I would leave church and go to the gym and work out two hours so you can only imagine what I look like in the 90s not 2022 but but the 90s and so here lately I went to YouTube to to get this um, ab training it's, it's a 10 minute ab training and I was like oh I can do that but but for 10 minutes, this woman doesn't stop. She works out on her abs nonstop. And I, I started out real good. And by the time I got to five minutes, I was calling Jesus. I was calling Mary. I was calling Matthew, uh, Bartholomew. I was calling everybody. Now, I, but the issue is I didn't stop because of the pain. I kept going. So many of you stop because of the pain. You want something, but you're not willing to deal with the pain that will accompany so you can have the vision and the dream that you so desperately want. Are you willing to deal with the pain so you can have what you want? There's going to be pain involved if you really want to win. Oh, Lord, it's going to be some things that's required of you that's going to take you outside of your comfort zone for you to accomplish your dreams, your visions, your goals, your desires. You must do the necessary work to see that come to pass. Work, work, work. Yeah, that, that's an interesting word nowadays because it just seems like people do not want to work. I've never seen so many for higher side because people do not want to work but the apostle Paul says if you don't work you're not going to eat oh let me encourage the people of God it's going to require work people want everything that they do not have to work for this disposition of entitlement give me what you have succeeded in but I don't want to work for it I want the status I want the degree I want the pedigree I want the relationship Relationship, but I'm not willing to put in the work. My wife and I will celebrate 13 years of marriage and we are working at it. 
Has it always been a good day? No. Has it always been howdy, howdy, and lovey-dovey? No. But you put the work in it, and as you sow into it, you're going to reap a harvest. You do not uh, give up because there's a storm. You don't quit because something is going on. That's when you get in there and say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to make it happen because I want it that badly. Somebody say work. work. Check out the lowest common denominator, uh, Proverbs 6 and 6. It says, pay attention to the ant, you sluggard. I mean, it's like Proverbs is cussing you out, calling your names. It calls you a lazy bone. It says, pay attention to the ant, you sluggard, how they are working to prepare. To, to Prepare for what's down the road. See, you ask the ant, you have to prepare for what's coming. There's a worth ethic that you have to have in order to get what you need, in order to get from point A to point B. And as the ant, it requires focus. So many of us, I told you at the beginning of the year that you was going to have to watch out this year because the enemy was going to be trying your very soul when it comes to your focus, when it comes to your perception, when it comes to your goals, when it comes to your dreams. Not only did distractions out there but distractions in here because most times we are our worst enemy oh god you got to learn how to deal with the enemy in a you you got to learn how to deal with the enemy in a you i know you're saying satan the lord rebuke you the blood of jesus come out well you need to be saying come out to yourself because you are getting you in a lot of trouble you're not disciplined you're going the wrong way you talk too much and you're saying things you have no business saying and now you are not experiencing the things that you so desire but look at your neighbor and say neighbor how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? This is, this is interesting because with that being stated, are you willing? Come on. The will, the will, the will of a man. We, the will, no other uh, entity, no other animal form has a will, but the human being has a will. Are you willing? Do you really want to be successful? Are you willing to choose to be blind so you can see? Are you willing? Are you willing to learn hurt? Trust pain. Embrace struggle to see your vision come to pass. Oh, let me say that again because you may want to write that down. Are you willing to learn hurt? trust pain embrace struggle so you can see your vision come to pass are you willing to make tough decisions in preparation for what's to come are you willing are you willing are you willing to do the necessary planning for workouts opposed to planning for the weekends are you willing? Are you willing uh, from a spiritual perspective to study to show yourself approved unto God? A workman that need him not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to, to do more? Just a little bit more. A little bit more studied. Less rested. More focused. More inquisitive. Are you willing to read more? Do more? See it from a different perspective. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing to get out of that do nothing seat? Because we say we want something, but we're not willing to do the work. Oh, the scripture says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day for when night coming, no man can work. I know you want to give it to you, but that's not how it's going to happen. The children of Israel wanted the promise, but they actually had to do the work and fight. Oh, God. Are you willing to fight for your promise? Are you willing to get in there and do the necessary thing to have the promises of God? 
God. Are you willing? Are you willing not to sit back from a disposition of criticizing and critiquing what somebody else is doing because that's normally a, a, a lazy person that has mastered in the subject to compensate for their own laziness. They'd rather look at you opposed to say, uh, look what you're doing, but are you doing the work? The reason that you're looking at me because you're not busy. You have a spirit of Sambalot and Tobiah while I'm working on rebuilding, working on what I lost. You at Restoration Life Church. That means you've lost some things in the past and God says I am going to give you the grace to accomplish and do it again and to be restored. Uh, he said I will restore the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locusts have eaten up. Let's take something from Nehemiah. Nehemiah and the team was working on rebuilding the wall. They didn't have time to talk to Sambalit and Tobiah. That is what's wrong with you today. You're talking to Mary, Sambalit, Tobiah, Joe, Willie, and they are distracting you. You got to tell them to get out of my atmosphere. I'm working on something because I want it bad. I have a ravenous hunger for life. I've wasted enough time. I don't have time for the foolishness. I don't have time for the craziness. I don't I don't have time for the gossip. I don't have time. Look at the neighbor and say, I don't have time. I don't have time. I'm busy, baby. I'm busy. You need to get a life. That's the problem. You don't got a life. You all over in my stuff. And what's going on with me? You need to get a life. How bad do you want it? I want you to scream it at somebody and say, how bad do you want it? <laughs> Are you willing to fight for it? Are you willing to work day and night to see your dream come to pass? Are you willing to give up time? Are you willing to give up sleep for it? Are you willing to see it from a different perspective? Are you willing to study for it? I ain't talking about studying Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. The devil is a liar. I'm talking about studying for where you're trying to go. Are you trying to study for your business? Are you studying for where you're trying to be? What you're trying to become? You want to be the CEO, baby? You got to stop reading the foolishness. You want to be the manager? You got to stop doing and being around crazy people. This is going to be the year that you're going to get away from the craziness. I rebuke the spirit that's trying to come against you in your mind of craziness and foolishness and deception and manipulation. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I got things to do. I got places to go. I got people to see and I don't have time for what you thinking about me, baby, because I know the direction that I'm going. Uh oh. Uh oh. Somebody shout hallelujah. Have you settled for the status quo? This is just as good as it's going to get. Oh, I want you to let you know that life is more than that five mile radius you live in, baby. There's a whole world out there. There's continents to be explored. There's parks to be explored. There's museums to be explored. There's oceans to be explored. There's another country to be explored. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Let me say it over here. What are you're gonna do with the rest of your life y'all didn't get it let me come back what are you gonna do with the rest of your life because the clock is ticking and you're getting older gray is coming teeth is falling baby what you're gonna do with the rest of your life how bad do you want it you want relationship but are your relationship material uh oh or is there an ulterior motive to have someone in your life to carry the load? Need exchange relationships. You scratch my back 
can I'll scratch yours. The only problem with that is sooner or later, somebody's back is not going to be scratched. And you're going to feel used. You're going to feel tricked and manipulated. You want somebody in your life that can give to you, that's happy to see you coming. Or you got to be in an atmosphere that's happy or joyful to see you coming. Not somebody that's hating on you. Let me come against this haterade spirit that's in the body of Christ. This envious and jealous spirit. Why are you envious and jealous of me? I'm in the field working. It's uh, That's all you got to do, baby, is get in the field and work. One that puts his hands on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. The problem is your hand on the plow and you're looking back. And, but if you look forward and focus on the author and the finisher of your faith, you can get some things done. You can make some things happen. I'm here to talk to some people that say I'm ready and I'm hungry. I'm hungry for life. I'm hungry for a change. I'm hungry to see something happen. I'm hungry for healing my body. I'm hungry. Are there any hungry people in this house? I want some people that's ready to eat. Are you ready to eat? I want some people that say bread of heaven. Feed me till I won't no more. Feed me with love. Feed me with joy. Feed me with wisdom. Feed me with goodness. Feed me with understanding. Feed me with strategy. Feed me with business concepts. Somebody say feed me. <sighs> you want relationship. You want relationship. That's nice. But uh, can you bring more to the table than just lips, hips, and fingertips? Do you have an encouraging conversation? Can you talk about more than just sex? Because if that's all you can talk about, the relationship is over. Because sooner or later, you're not going to want to have sex. We got to feed each other. We got to go grocery shopping. We got to go to Target. We got to go to Walmart. We got things to do, baby. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want more out of life. I want more conversations. I want something better for myself. Even the way I see this church, this ain't nothing. I see waterfalls. I see parks. I see lakes. I see it for restoration life. I don't know what you see, but I see all that God has for us. Somebody say us. Not just for me, for us. We got things to do. We got, we got places to go. Somebody show hallelujah. Oh, oh, you, want, you want the relationship. But can you be the love you seek? Can you be the love you seek? You want everybody to be everything for you that you can't even give. You can't give it, you're nasty. You don't know how to talk to him. You treat him like he's a stepchild. You talk to him any old kind of way. And you're wondering why he down the street with Mary. Because you don't know how to treat him. Can you be the love you seek, baby? Do you know how to handle gold? See, real gold and diamonds is protected. The problem is, wonderful people, you don't have no protection around you. Any dog is coming beyond the boundary line. You don't have no boundaries. But on this year, because I'm hungry for life, I'm setting up boundaries. No, you can't talk to me like that. No, you can't treat me like that. No, I'm not going over there. I'm hungry for a real life. No, I'm not a witch spell with a B. You're not going to call me anything out of my name. I am a child of God. I'm not a hoe. I'm not a slut. I'm not none of those things. I'm a king's kid. Somebody say king's kid. I'm hungry for life. Life in that more abundantly. Somebody shout life. Oh, shout out.
Alamas, Leman Delebesh, y'all gonna make me real happy. Up in here, up in here, give your neighbor a high five and tell them life. That's what's about to hit your house. I speak to every dead thing that is about to come forth, every dead seed that's in the ground. It's about to come up because I'm about to experience life. I'm going places. I'm doing some things. Life. Are you desperate? How desperate are you? When the blind men wanted to be healed by Jesus, they were desperate. Desperate in their heart. Desperate in their spirit. Oh, but there was a woman by the name, a no-name woman, if you will, that uh, had an issue of blood. Oh, she had an issue, like some of you in this place have had an issue. And the scripture says for 12 long years, she was desperate for healing. And she went to the doctors that basically said there is nothing else we can do. But she heard that Jesus was passing by. And in her desperation, the Bible says she went through the crowd. Can you imagine a crowd, a multitude of people? This woman had bulldog tenacity. Excuse me. Move out the way. Excuse me. I got to get to Jesus. She was desperate because she said, how bad do I want it? I want it real bad. I'm not going to step on anybody, but I will step around every trick trap that is set before me. I got things to do. And so she found herself. She said, if I can just get to Jesus, as he touched the hem of the garment, this woman's desperation was so potent that it actually took virtue out of Jesus. I want to know, is your desperation that potent that you will take and just get to the hem of the garment because I'm desperate for a change. I'm desperate for a shift. I'm desperate for healing. I'm desperate to see it from a different perspective. Whatever I got to do, God open my eyes so I can clearly see which way to go. It's late in the day and the sun is almost down. I don't have time for deception and manipulation. Get away from me. Later, Gator. What I'm about to do is going to cause a shift. You ain't seen a party like the party that's getting ready to take place right here at Restoration Life Church. That's why I had you dancing earlier. I was getting you ready for the party. It's going to be a Holy Ghost party. And the type of party we going to have, we're going to have flowers that's going to be flown in. We're going to have tablecloths and linen that's going to be flown in. See, you're supposed to be kings and queens. You're supposed to be royalty. But you're so stuck on poverty that you can't see it from a different perspective. But when your eyes are open, it will cause you to see yourself from a different perspective. You'll say, I'm royalty, baby. Chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that I shall push forth the praises of him that call me out of darkness into this marvelous light. And there was also a woman by the name of Hannah. She wanted a baby. A baby was the promise. And the book said that she prayed so until Eli, the judge, thought she was drunk. Have you ever been drunk? Let me talk to some real people. Uh, Cause see, y'all want to be have that sanctified face. Have you ever been drunk? I mean, I mean, you know, 
drunk baby. She was praying Elder Johnny until Eli says this woman been drinking E and J. She been drinking. She been drinking that stuff, Seagram 7. She been drinking. Paul Massage. She, 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 she been drinking. But the truth of the matter, she had been praying. There is a level in the spirit where you can pray and get God's attention. It's called desperate prayer. It's called God, I'm going to stay here until you move. And I'm going to push out this promise with prayer. Because the effectual fervent prayer, that's a hot burning prayer of the righteous man, avails much. Are you willing to pray until you see something happen? I got something else for you. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you seek him, you can have it. If you seek him, it's yours for the asking. For if a son ask a father for bread, he will not give him a stone. He will not give him a fish. If evil men know how to give good gifts, how much more does the heavenly father, if you ask, you can have. If you see, you can have. If you knock, the door will be open. You must have got to put in the work. Ask, it means to work for it. Seek, it means to work for it. Knock, it means to work for it. And then in the Greek, it says ask and keep on asking. Knock and keep on knocking. Keep, just keep on seeking. And the more you do it, it's going to come back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. It's yours if you work for it. The shift that I was telling you about over took place 15 minutes ago while you were listening at me. God says I shifted your perception. You're no longer gonna be double-minded. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You are double-minded because you had double perception. But God said, I heal your eyes. I heal your perception. Now you can clearly see which way to go. Now you can clearly see how to get there. Now you can clearly see a wolf in sheep clothing. Now you can clearly see a trap set before you. Now you can clearly see that on tomorrow things are going to get better. Why you say that preacher? Because he says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Look at three people and say it's working together for my good. It's working together while I'm working. It's working together. Work, work, work. Let me tell you this last thing. Work, work, work. Work your creativity. Work your business. Work your schooling. Work your marriage. Work your relationship. Work that building. Work your finances. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. You must work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Work, work, work. Work your mind. Work your body. Work your mind. Work your body. Work your perception. Work your relationship. Work, work, work. Work your vision, man. Work your goals. You can do it. It's in you. You have it in you. You got it in you. 
It's on the inside of you. You can do it. You can get the degree. You can get the bachelor's, the master's, the doctorate. It's yours. Work, work, work. God says I extended your life so you can go to the promise and build. I restored your life so you can go to the promise and build. Build so your enemies can come at the table and get something to eat. But I'm preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. Work, work, work. Work that business, work that strategy, work that concept, work your music, produce, yeah, yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah, somebody shout glory. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to give God a crazy praise, yeah, go, go, work. Work, 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 work. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want the change? How bad do you want the shift? How bad do you want the dream? How, how bad? When you want it bad enough, you're willing to look like Hannah. You're willing to look crazy. When it's bad enough, bad enough, you say, okay, I'm gonna make the necessary changes. When I go home today, not tomorrow, I'm gonna start by writing my vision. I'm gonna make it plain. This is where I'm going to be by this time next year. This is where I'm going to be five years from now. This is where I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to be doing. And by any means necessary, y'all get that? Any means necessary, I'm going to do what I need to do to get there. Because I got, wait, wait, uh oh, come on, let me give you scripture. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The problem is you haven't tapped in to the treasures that's in you. You're so busy looking at them and over there. You don't see you. That's why, not from arrogance, confidence. See, see, there's a difference. Not arrogance and conceit, no. I'm talking about security in Jesus. You better know who you are. Because if you don't, the enemy of your soul will have your brain for breakfast, lunch, and dinner constantly telling you who you not, who you can't be. And the next time somebody say who you think you are, you respond back, who do you think I'm not? Yeah. The next time somebody say who do you think you are, you respond back, who do you think I'm not? Yeah. I've learned. So I used to feel sorry because I was getting rejected. I was getting rejected. But check this out about rejection. I found out that in the place that I was rejected, over here I was accepted. Oh, I was just in the wrong place. You were in this place where they don't recognize that you're valuable. No, see, that's old. But that old over here is classic and worth a whole lot of money. 
it's all about where you're going to plant your feet. So I made a decision. Oh, I wasn't accepted over here because I belonged over here. And everything just changed. They was happy to see me coming. And I no longer go back here looking for validation. I, I just, I don't do it. Because they haven't changed. Uh-oh, their perception has a moat in it. I'm going to be around those that can clearly see. So when I got around people that was encouraging, and I was encouraging them, I found out that all oh, my gifts start coming out. My gifts and all that I had, to, it just start coming out. Because I was in the right atmosphere. This is how I'm going to end. And you shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. But what tree are you? What tree are you? Because palm trees wouldn't do well in the Midwest. What kind of tree? It got to be a tree that's planted by water. And some of you are almost dried up because your tree was not planted by water. If you believe on me, as the scripture has said, that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So I discovered, and I'm going to tell you, God will use your enemies to push you in the right place. He will use those people that's critiquing and finding fault. It will push you. I know you're going to cry, but you're going to wake up. And all those tears are sowing your field. Because while they talking about you, it's really cleaning you up. I discovered so many people that was letting me have it. If I allow myself to go back there, they still doing the same thing. Have not moved at all. But they push me to be by the rivers of living water. And when you get in the place, listen, listen. When you finally get in that place, don't you let nothing or nobody push you out of it. And never leave your place of prominence to go after the peasant that threw the tomato. Stop leaving your God-given place to go after the peasant that threw the tomato. You too high for that. You too high for it. Because if the moon, if the dog is barking at the moon, ain't nobody going to pay no attention. But if that moon bark back, it's going to be on the front page paper. The problem is you don't see how much you've grown. You're in a place where you can now decree and declare. And your words mean something. Yes, I will do that. No, I'm not doing it. And you are not going to push me. I only want those in my life that can handle the greatness that's on the inside of me. Can you handle it, baby? I'm not going to the basement to have a conversation with you. Because so many of you all live like this. One foot in the basement and the other foot on the second floor. And you split in your personalities. And that Sybil spirit got to go. Y'all yeah. know who Sybil is, but she had multiple personalities. Just split. That's right. No, this is who I am. You can't handle it. That's your problem. Don't let somebody else's problem be y'all problem. That's their problem. And you need to stay over there with your problem. I don't have no problem with you. Mm -mm. And don't make it our problem. That's your problem. 
and you stay over there with your problem. I'm telling you, I just gave y'all some wisdom. I'm telling you, that's your problem, not our problem. I don't have no problem with you. I see you from the right perspective because I can see. My perception is clear. I see who you can be, what you can do. Uh, but because you have double eyes, until Jesus hears you, stay over there. And let me stay over here. Did you enjoy the word today?